Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. The Toddcast is filmed before a live feline audience. Good evening, everybody. Jumbo. Jumbo. Tonight is finally, finally, Animal Kingdom. Yes. We're going to be talking about Animal Kingdom here on the Toddcast. Yes. And it's going to be a marvelous time and a marvelous thing, and everyone's going to love it. And it's going to be something that we are hardly going to forget because not only is it my sister's favorite, favorite park. Yes. But we're doing something different tonight. <laughs> we're, we're, we're branching out. We are. We are branching out. And just to give you an example of what we're branching out to, we have multiple cameras. Yay. <laughs> Look at us. More of us. Look at us. More. We have multiple cameras. More of the amazing that is. That's right. Because <laughs> if if there's one thing we do, it's a whole lot of us. And <laughs> Yay. Yeah. <laughs> there we are. Oh, we're, a, we're a whole lot. It's it's gonna be one of them nights. <laughs> it's gonna be Goody. one of them nights. No, I'm excited. This is like you said, my all time favorite park. I yep. could spend <clears throat> lots of. T- I open to close there. I could spend multiple days there. Well, yeah, it's my favorite. And oh, I have to admit that. It, okay, it has two of my favorite species there. Yes. You know who I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I think so. Gorillas yeah. and lions. Gorillas and lions. Okay. That's I'm right. Like, like yes. what else is there? Well, then well, I mean, I know there's I, the Howler Monkey Island yeah. over in Asia. There is, yeah. I, mean, I mean, there's tigers. There's the fruit bats that are just adorable. They don't have the, they've oh. gone off exhibit for a minute. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, and, <laughs> okay. They're a lot of fun to look at, but they do stink. Big time. But yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, or anyway, <laughs> like, you know. All right, enough of this. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Jones, and welcome to Jumanji. Yeah, and yeah, okay, you're I'm done. done. <laughs> it's so, going away. Make the lost cat wear. There you go. Somebody yeah. got to. The lost cat gets to wear it now. <laughs> All right, so yeah, tonight we're going to be talking about Animal Kingdom. I almost said California. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea why. I have no idea why at all. Well, let's do something formal. Welcome back to the Toddcast. Yes. If you've been watching our series, we appreciate it. Um, we are finally at the last park in the order of opening dates and chronological order. So we are stopping at the largest. Yes. And in my opinion, fight me on it. Well, yeah. It's, best park ever. It, you're going to call <laughs> it the best park ever. But before we get too much farther along in our outline beat down yeah and everything <laughs> um you have news i do have some news yes you do mm-hmm. i'm having a little bit of a job change i was at one facility and now i'm moving back to a place that i have opened twice here in denver i'm returning back to this, the education manager at the downtown aquarium denver um I'm very excited about it it's definitely unexpected and something I never thought would happen, but here we are. And those paths that you're walking when you think that you're being led away from something and never to go back. Um, and in the end, it's all you're on that path, returning you back where you not necessarily started, but definitely need to be. Um, that's what has happened. So I'm ready to go back and teach landlocked people all about oceans and I water th- and all of the things. Honestly, I think it's fantastic. And the reason I'm really excited. Thank the you. reason is, is because I mean, it's, it sings to your interests. Well, you obviously. know me. You yes. know me, so you know what I need. But it so. also sings to my interests as well. Okay. <laughs> there's, there, there's a selfish reason. I know. There's a selfish reason. I know. We joked about it in my interviews. I'm like, my family's really excited that I'm getting back here. And oh, they're yeah? like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Well, and what just because it, now it's about me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got to dive in all three mm-hmm. major exhibits saltwater exhibits yeah yeah and all three of the major habitats mm-hmm. that are at that at that facility mm-hmm. 
I can never thank you enough for that. And I got to do it before I lost a portion of my leg. Yeah. So there's that. But the, the, the fun part about it for me was the fact that I got to the first dive. Cat was very little, maybe three. I yeah, think. probably. Yeah. And she got to come up to the glass and put her hands up on the glass. And I would come over to the glass and I would say hello to her and everything. It was fun. The second time it was di- dive with the sharks. Yeah. Yeah, it was dive with the sharks. Uh-huh. So I was in the the three hundred thousand gallon yeah, shipwreck exhibit, the deep one. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. The third time, I got to deliver Cat's birthday card. I think I have that picture. We'll f- try and find it, and if yeah. so, we'll put it right here. Yes, <laughs> if she doesn't have it, I do. And yeah, yeah we'll and put it there. Of course, yeah. There we are. But, and we surprised her, so it was yeah. a big Oh, surprise. it was beautiful. <laughs> it was so beautiful. And one of our thumbnail pictures uh, came from that birthday party. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, the thumbnail for the podcast yeah. playlist yes. is our album picture. Our album cover. <laughs> yeah, there and we go. And Katie are. took the picture. She yes, took she the picture. Yes, she did. Oh. So, yeah, that's us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, um, let's start in with it. Let's start in Animal Kingdom. Yay. Big freaking park. Well, animals require space. Yes, they do. This park was opened in 1998. Earth Day, 1998, which was, which right. was April 22nd that year, but they consider right. Earth Day their birthday. Um, so every Earth Day is when the big celebration actually happens, and that's when it was opened in 1998. Exactly. Um, the lead Imagineer was Joe Rody. Love him. All hail Joe Rody. Yeah. All hail Joe Rody. I would love, at one time in, not Tusker House, but Tiffin's, they would do um, Imagineer talks at a special dinner that you could buy up, and he was often the speaker at those, and I was really... Now that he's retired, it's like, oh, we missed out. But it would have been awesome to have dinner with him and at Tiffin's and hear him talk. So, yeah, and very cool. Honestly, I just want to meet him just because I'm not much of a Disney. I geek, mean, yeah, you know? he's just very talented, very creative oh, yeah. person. That's like, you know, Ra- Raleigh Crump. I would have loved to have met him. Exactly. So. Well, and he, Joe Rody's fingerprints are all, all over over yeah. the last couple of decades, or more than that, actually. You know, the last. Actually, say about thirty years. Yeah, yeah. And his fingerprints are all over Disney products mm-hmm. and Disney Disney properties. Really cool stuff. So, yep. yay, Mr. Rody. Yep, and thank you again, Mr. Rody. Thank Rody. you. <laughs> if we, you ever watch this, we want to say thanks. Yep, and we know that all of your power resides in your earrings. <laughs> we understand it, and yes. Anyway, um, where was I? It's um one of Walt's visions is a park as well. Yes. He wanted to have live animals in his parks. So this is kind of the realization of that. Um, Animal Kingdom is an AZA accredited institution, which means that they are um, part of the Association for Zoos and Aquariums, which is a non-government agency that had sets very high quality standards for the animal care and animals in the care of humans all around the country and the world. It is the premier organization to be a part of if you are in an animal care facility. And being a huge part of that, they are really influential in AZA as well as a lot of conservation efforts that they house. Um, Disney Conservation is one of the leading conservation organizations in our country, and they have a lot of projects worldwide. Uh, One of the cool things in Animal Kingdom is that when you purchase anything, food, beverage, trinkets, shirts, Um, They uh, have you have an option to donate to Disney Conservation and it is a dollar to dollar match. Right. So whenever you do that, they dollar dollar match and to all of their products. They give a lot of grants to conservation projects around the world as well. So if you apply to Disney Conservation as a researcher and a conservationist, you can get a lot of clout and a lot of great backing with some of your projects. And it's all about preserving the planet because everything has a purpose and a place and keeping our world uh, functioning and resourceful and meeting the needs of all the living things. And there you have it. (laughs) And I think we're done. (laughs) With that part, I'll probably just wait. This is my job. This is what I do for a living. So the fact that we're in the park that is my people and my tribe and my work. 
Hold well, yeah. on. Yeah, exactly. Hold on, everyone. I was going to say, we're, not, we're nowhere near done yet. Nope. And it's just going to get crazier from here. <laughs> so getting to the park. And getting to the park, um, there's, there's really only one way to get to yeah. the park. And that's with the bus. Yeah. Um, th- even from Animal Kingdom Lodge, you take a bus. bus. Everybody rides the bus. And from Magic Kingdom or from the Magic Kingdom Resort area out to Animal Kingdom, it is approximately 25 to almost 30 minutes. I thought it was 18. It can be 18 on a good day. On a good day, okay. Okay, but in a regular, you know, just here we are at the park kind of day mm-hmm. and... Um, Traffic. Regular season. Yeah, it's, it takes a while, okay? It takes a while because not only do you have to wait for the bus to show up, you have to wait for the bus to unload. And then get load up. And then yeah. you have to wait yeah. for the bus to load. And then you go. Mm-hmm. So that's about about three and a half minutes by itself. With all of that said, Disney transportation is the way to go because it's uh, yeah, so convenient and easy and you don't have to park and uh, yeah, you know, all the things. Let, let, let me be clear. Okay. I'm not calling it out as it being a problem. I'm calling it out to say, don't assume that this is going to be rapid fire. Okay, you get you don't get there that quick, so please be aware of that when you go. Um, yeah, don't be that don't be that individual that sits there at the bus stop thing. Me and my family of fourteen, you know. which we were almost <laughs> yeah, we were eleven, which we were eleven, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. But you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. You oh, know I know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, bus is convenient, but it does it is the furthest out. It is the biggest of the four parks, um, simply because uh, the animals require the space. It is a little deceptive because when you're in the park, you actually do- doesn't feel as big as it is. But the safari ride, um, Kilimanjaro Safari, takes up a big hunk of the of the footprint. Oh, exactly. So exactly. I mean, so much so that they actually put an attraction on the east side of it, at, at the northeast side mm-hmm. of that of the area. Yeah. You know. Um, also, we're n- we're not even incorporating the amount of backstage. Oh, and animal, animal areas. areas. Yeah, the back, that, the behind the scenes areas that oh, are required. Wow. Because of AZA. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, that and that's. <laughs> there's an attraction you need to ride so you can see that. Yeah, okay. we'll talk about it. Yes, yeah. we will that talk about. That was a good find it. too. I had oh, to yeah. watch. I had to watch another uh, vlogger to really knew know it existed. I didn't know it was there. Right. I had to watch a vlogger do it. Thanks, Mammoth Club. And then... Um, <laughs> we love you guys. We love um, you guys. So I was like, oh, cool. So we've got some fun things about that. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. So we get there. You're in the park. There's um, the front entrance is themed. Get through the ticket styles. And then it feels like uh, it's kind of like d- a double set of doors. <laughs> you know, like you enter and there's this really great space with guest services and everything yeah but you have to keep walking around that now the cool thing is they have animal exhibits immediately when you get in there so there's a yes. lot of uh tro- water birds um right there and then they have the art the anteaters yes and then you walk around kind of that the birds and the anteater space and then you get to and then you start the your way icon well you start to move towards yeah. the hub area yeah which is um Okay, yeah, the front area is called the Oasis uh-huh. because that's got the shops, a few eating places, typical uh, water, Disney. sunscreen. You know. Yeah, typical <laughs> Disney. All of the shopping's kind of that space that you enter into, right? And then you go in. It's just a little more um, discreet. I don't even know how to. It's yeah, unassuming. I mean, it's, it's unassuming. There you it's go. Unassuming. It's not as obvious, right? But there it is. So. Yeah, um, I will. I will make this statement. There have been several guests that have gone to um, Animal Kingdom and said that it's actually the warmest of all the parks in Walt Disney World, and there's a reason. Now, there's a lot of shade at Animal Kingdom, but it also holds the humidity. It holds the heat. It holds the humidity it because holds the, the plants, everything, okay? the plants around there are holding the water and the humidity, which makes it hotter. Right. So. Yeah, so it it is a warmer park, but I don't necessarily notice the warmth until well into the afternoon. Yeah. You know, I don't notice how horribly hot it can be. Because there is a lot of good shade, and then there's, yeah. you know, a good chance for breeze as well. Oh, yeah. I found, so with those two things, you have it. But yes, it right. is a hot, it's a hot space. It's hot. Yeah. So, okay, so now we're moving into 
Discovery, Discovery Island. Discovery Island. Discovery Island has more small animal habitats. Mm-hmm. More, uh, I think the the Red River. Red River boars. hogs are. Red yeah. River hogs are in there. Yes. Um, the small clawed river otters. Yes. The kangaroos and wallabies are in there. Right. So there's all around the perimeter of the Tree of Life in a 360 R animal exhibit. Right. And the icon, yes, is the Tree of Life. Yes. And we will try to put a picture so, of that here it's castle if you will yeah it's yeah it's the the centerpiece mm-hmm. of the park now this is a cool <laughs> piece sorry i'm getting all excited about okay it. well yeah <laughs> well, i expected um, this the trunk of it has all sorts of sculptures of animals throughout the animal kingdom and it is actually kind of strategically designed for a linnaean cladistic sort of sorry i'm getting all zoology on you um <laughs> way of moving t- through the animal kingdom from your invertebrates to your vertebrates to your higher level um order of animals so it it is scientifically correct with your lower levels being your more invertebrate animals as you transition through into your vertebrates and into your higher levels right so. and it it goes th- as a historian it goes through the zoological history of the planet as well the See. fossil record has never been my jam see and that, I'm, you know i'm a behaviorist so yeah and th- that's that's my typical thing is i i i get into that that's where one of the lands here is kind of important to me because it's part of that fossil record that i'm really into unfortunately bye bye yeah i know i know it's going away it's going away but you know hopefully uh it, it it will be back with something even better. Oh, it'll it'll so. have a presence, but yeah. So anyway, we're in the Discovery Island, that hub area. In that area, again, are the shops, food areas. Um, they do some really kind of fun pop up little musical shows. Yes. Um, they have a flighted bird demonstration that, that flies circled in there. the tree. Mm-hmm. They yeah. fly around. They're supposed to come back, but. Well, sometimes ninety nine percent of the time it works. Yeah, and they do come back eventually. <laughs> they do come back eventually, or they'll but, have a little powder up in the trees at the front. And yeah, you just have eyeballs and, on them the whole day. Yeah, and they shriek at you. <laughs> yeah, occasionally. Other things. Which oh, <laughs> I've never had it happen. I've never had. Well, there I've had yeah. it happen to me. I, uh, I've never had it happen, <laughs> and now that I've said something, it's going to happen. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Should I? Yeah, I will. And yeah, because oh no. Okay. Um, so anyway, that is the front park. And then as in true Disney fashion as well, they are in a sp- kind of spoken wheel or a hub and spoke kind of yes. layout. So you've got different lands, if you will, or what do you, what are they? I mean, I call them, um, land. I call them lands. They so, are lands, countries, regions, countries, continents. Yeah. All around. And know. they actually match the spaces that a lot of the Disney animal movies are. Trump. Yes. So a lot yes. of they have some big ones. So yeah. that is kind of the start layout. Now when we go or when I go, yeah. um, I head to immediately will head to Africa. Yes. And Harambe. Um Oh wait, I'm, wait, wait, wait. We can't leave Discovery Island. We need to talk about an attraction that's there. Oh. Because well, I it's usually the only, do that in the afternoon though. I understand, but it's the only yeah. one yeah. left. Yeah. Yeah. In any Disney park. Yes. Yeah. It's tough to be a bug. Mm -hmm. And it's, this is a 3D sit down show where you can be in the air conditioning and it gets dark. And it also is one of the, (sighs) one of the ones that um, actually all the kids hate because there's a scary part of spiders coming down from the ceiling and it gets very loud and um, you get stung in the back. Yeah, you do. You get stung in the back from the, from the wasps and the hornets and, um, and then all of the, little, the grasshoppers try and use bug spray on the humans. And, and then the grubs run underneath you. And yes. <laughs> yes. Which I think is just fun. It's hilarious. Yes. There's a stink bug moment. Oh, yeah. The stink bug moment. And then <laughs> the termite tournament. Turn, yeah. Turnimator. Yeah. <laughs> turnimator. Yeah. Yeah. Try that again. <laughs> Terminator. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The little Ooh. termite. Terminator. <laughs> But he's only this big. I know. <laughs> so anyway, it's a great, it is a great show. And it's all yeah. about Bugs Life and the movie and it's fun. So Oh, and the red-legged tarantula. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
voiced by Cheech Marin. Mm -hmm. I love so, that. It's, yeah. it's a classic. It's definitely a classic. It's wonderful. It's a great one to hit in the afternoon when you've been hot and sweaty and are needing a place to go in where it's cool and dark and you can sit down for 20 minutes. And the pre-show as we were waiting in the lobby is songs, is, yeah, Disney Broadway songs. Sung by bugs. Sung <gasps> by bees. Most summer bees, summer um, crickets. Oh, yeah. Summer cicadas. Yes, yes. So... All of our sound making bugs. Yeah, it's so cute. It's really cute. It is awfully it's a cute. Good, good for littles. Yes. Um, well, who are, oh, I mean, yeah, pay attention to your kid. Thank you. Pay attention to thank your you. kid and know what they can handle. Um, yeah. So, because yeah. I know moms and dads, you want them to experience the thing. It's, oh, it's bugs life. They're going to like it. But there are some really dark moments and just know your kids. Yeah, because it, it, honestly, I mean, it gets scary. It can, yeah. It can get oh, yeah, scary, yeah, yeah. you know? And people already have phobias when it comes to spiders and bugs anyway, and then you put them life-size in 3D and coming at your face. Right. Yeah, it's kind of, right. yeah. You know, but I do like seeing Flick up on the ceiling, yeah. come, you know, poking his whole head, head down, down the hole, and, you know. And, that, the circus, that's and the circus animals. And, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you know, it's good. It is a fun one, but it is a, a classic, and we'll see how long it lasts there. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, this Discovery Island and walking around Tree of Life and seeing the exhibits and everything is just. There, I mean, okay. Uh, there's so much to explore in almost every region that we're going to talk about. I haven't seen. Honestly, I'm gonna. I haven't seen every exhibit around Tree of Life right. in the flesh. I've right. seen it pictures and things like that, but like I get. This park could ha does have a tendency for you to stand in line for a long time for a few things. It does. So, and uh, two of the big attractions take a long time. They're at least yes. 20 to 30 minutes on the attraction. So it's, yeah, you exactly. know, your day can be killed quite quickly. Yes, it can, it can hurt you. It is the earliest closing park because of the animals and what we, yes. they are required to be part of, again, for AZA regulations. It is the earliest opening park right. for that same reason. So early open is eight. Right. Um, for if you're a resort guest, it can be 7.30. Right. Um, so just note that it is an earlier park. So if you were going to park hop, you could easily put this park during your day and then park hop to something in the evening. Yeah. Or and, go back to the resort. <laughs> well, and they, they've there have been those YouTubers out there that said that early morning and towards the early evening are the best um, yeah. times to go. And I mentioned that in one of the first ones, that's when the animals are most active. Right. When they're getting fed, they get a breakfast and a dinner. There you go. And that's when they're most active and sun's going up, sun's going down. That is just animal behavior. Yep. In, so any zoo or aquarium that you visit, <clears throat> it is, you want to see a lot of activity animal wise. You get there right when they first open or stay until right before they close. Right. So. Okay. So we're going to be talking about now, that I've sidetracked you. I'm that's sorry. okay. Yeah. Um, we're going to be talking about Africa. And that's usually as we go. Yes. Will be the first area we go to because <clears throat> it has two of, well, for me, three banger attractions that I must do. Mm -hmm. And I must do them first. Um, Africa is themed to an African village of Hamrabi. Me. And is the home and headquarters of Kilimanjaro Safaris. Yes. Okay. Now, the African village there is set and themed to an African village that you would probably normally see if you had visited the continent of Africa in whatever particular country. And it's a quote-unquote ubiquitous town. Yeah, and, and okay. a redesign because Mr. Oh, yeah. Rody went out there and they did a redesign. So Exactly. <laughs> um, it's... As I said, the headquarters for Kilimanjaro Safaris, which is one of my first attractions I must do. Always. I must yeah. do that. Um, it is also the home of Festival of the Lion King. Have to. Live show, some of the best music and choreography you are ever going and to I, see. I cry every time, so I'm not yes. ashamed of that. <laughs> yes. I cry every yes. time. So, um, I love it. I, I agree with you. That's a have to. It's, it's, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. but ever since Cat was about that big, mm -hmm. we have done Festival of the Lion King and I will not, not do it. Um, other than that, they have also the walking trail of, of Gorilla Falls, mm -hmm. which is, 
an important one for me. It has one of my all-time favorite zoo and aquarium exhibits ever created. Exactly. exactly. I love it. Um, it's the naked mole rat exhibit. That's oh, what- y'all thought it was going to be the gorillas, but it's not. The naked mole rat exhibit is fantastical. If y'all uh, remember the TV show Kim Possible. She had a naked mole rat. No, Ron, her friend. Had the naked mole rat. So he was there. Anywho, <laughs> naked mole rats are fantastic. They, Picture. <laughs> <laughs> they actually uh, daily will redesign their habitat and their homes. So they are a burrower. They are underground. And they will daily reconfigure their trails under underneath so that at one time the keepers would at night fill in all the tunnels so they could redesign it during the day. Um, so the guests could see that happening. It's right. fantastic. It's yeah. so good. It is. It's I a, love it. It's a fun exhibit. It really is. And it's along the, it's along the Gorilla Falls Yeah, it's path. one of the stops. Yeah. And it's an indoor stop. Yeah, so you can get out of the so, heat for yeah, a minute. Yeah, you get out of the heat, you rest, there's some sit down benches to be mm-hmm. and just be. I love that exhibit. Oh, yeah. So anyway, um, Kilimanjaro Safaris, I think honestly that is one that you need to talk about. Where do I begin? <laughs> so you get based the way the theming of the exhibit is our attraction, excuse me, is that you get on a uh, vehicle that's taking you on an African safari with Kilimanjaro safaris, which is basically a conservation unit. And you're going around and you're seeing what's out there in the plains and the grasslands of Africa or the savanna. Right. Um, so along the way, you get to encounter a lot of different African animals. They have crocodiles and okapis and hippos and um, cheetahs and elephants Giraffe. and giraffes. And so when, as you work, move your way around, the big kind of musical moment, if you will, is you get down a hill and turn the corner and then you're on the savanna where you have um, the cows and the copies and the giraffes and the zebra and the all all of the animals all the savannah animals um moving about so it's up to the animals of what you see and how often you see them because they have free range there um they have a lot of cool food stations around so the best kind of pro tip i can give is look for those food stations because that's where you're going to see a lot of the activity um everybody likes to get a snack and that's what animals do yeah um yeah. This exhibit or this attraction, <laughs> it's an exhibit to me. This attraction during the heat of the day is not going to be as active because animals are not dumb. And if it's hot, they're going to go find shade and yeah. they're going to go find some place to cool off. So they have designed it where you can't, they are in view, but a lot of times they're kind of off the main path. So you might not see. This is also an, an attraction that is timing dependent on the animals there are many times that we have gotten on a safari and stopped for a good 10 minutes because of giraffes in the way and they don't do anything to encourage or move the animals they let the animals have the space because that's where they live and they allow the that to be their home so if they stand there for 10 minutes you park for 10 minutes yeah and we have we have experienced the giraffe jam Mm -hmm. Um, several times actually. Yeah, I have a really great one though. Um, 2021, I went during the pandemic, but they had just had a baby draft a few months beforehand. And we, I went with Tom and Lon and we got on there and I was like, oh, I really hope we see the baby draft. It was, had not gone on exhibit yet, but I wasn't, you know, you never know. And I'm like, oh, we see. So we turned the corner and we just stop. And it was another 10 minutes and I'm like, Great animals yeah. in the way. And our keep our driver was like, Yeah, we got something going on. I, in my zoo aquarium professional moment, leaned over to my sister in law Lon and I was like, I think the baby drafts out. He's like, No. I think the baby drafts out. I think they're putting that baby out on the exhibit for the first time. So I'm just kind of letting things and I'm watching the keeper and I'm listening to the radio calls because they do have it's live. None of it is like they are talking to each other because it is animal dependent. Oh, yeah. So all of a sudden we got the clear and we started going and there's all of the utility vehicles and the keepers and everything. And oh, there it was. There's the baby giraffe. So we were one of the first people to see that baby giraffe on exhibit. 
And it was like, yay, that was ma- a magic for and me. So there like, you go. Yeah. There you go. Um, the only thing that I have comparable to that is when we were there last time staying at the lodge mm-hmm. where we saw the baby the zebra, zebra come yeah. out for the first time. Yeah. And this was at the lodge. This was not at the park. No. So, um, but yeah, watching that little one come out and everybody who usually is out there was very, very well, curious. And that's the, the the animals. But the big clues is if you see humans in the area, right? something's going on with the animals. Because right. a lot of times, I mean, yeah, the keepers are going to be out there cleaning and stuff, and that's normal. But if you see what looks like a lot of zoo vehicles in the space, there's something going on. Yeah, and that's pay your attention. Big clue. That's your big clue. Pay attention. Why? And if there's human beings in clusters with some sort of like uh, binoculars or radios or phones or whatever. <laughs> That's your other clue. <laughs> so those are the things that I do to look for and their advice. You know, I'm like, yeah, something's going on. And then there was a baby draft. So that was kind of fun. That was a cool one. Exactly. I, I, and I mean, I love that exhibit anyway. Well, and see, for me, I also like the big pachyderm animals. Oh, the, uh, the elephants. Yeah. The elephants, the, elephant the rhinoceros, exhibit. the mm-hmm. hippos. I, I love those guys. Yeah. I love them. You They're know, cool. The, I mean, the the white rhinos or wide rhinos, whatever you want to... Neat. It holds a lot of animals. You get a lot of species diversity. It's a multi-species space. Um, so... Exactly. It's and, a good one. Yeah, I mean, and it's... what well, it, Right now, there is a baby African elephant mm-hmm. out on exhibit. I know. And I, I'm... I know. <sighs> I wish that I had the availability. I know. I, I want to go. Okay. I want to go see the little one. I know. I want to go see the little one. Because there's a way you can actually get kind of up close to some of the critters, if you're willing to pay some dollars. That yeah, th- we'll talk about we'll that talk in a about second. That in a second. Yeah, because okay. Um, yeah. Now we talked about the Gorilla Falls Expedition Trail. I do. I love that one. It's a, that's kind of your traditional zoo exhibit space yes. of Animal Kingdom. Um, they have. One in Africa, one in the Asia exhibit. So it's diff- those animals you'd find in those regions. So. Right. And the gorillas are fantastical. And their population of gorillas now is large enough. You are almost practically guaranteed to see mm-hmm. a gorilla. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have a whole family. Um, yeah. They have the lo- longest living male in zoos and aquariums. Oh, what's his name? I'll have to figure it out. Um, uh, speaking of, I'm, I'm going to plug this from Disney Plus and National Geographic. Yeah. Um, Animal Kingdom Behind the Scenes. Yeah, it's a good one. Okay, it's a good series. <laughs> yeah. uh, it came out a couple of years About ago. Three years ago. Yeah. Um, th- Chris and I sat down for several nights and finished the series because we were watching it religiously because it 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 really and it all it profiled her favorite animal, which is the giraffe. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> they're derpy. They are derpy, but they're beautiful, <laughs> they're, loving little creatures. Not little, but you know, they they're can, loving creatures. They you know, can kick in, split your skull. Yeah, they can. So, hey. but when they love you, they yeah, love you. They love you. Yeah, they're very. Yeah, you there's. Know. I call them derpies. But well, yeah. And Gorilla Falls, the Gorilla um, exhibit is brilliant. I think it is one of the best best designed exhibits that I've seen. They have a bachelor section, then they have a family section. Right. The family section has, um, I think the youngest one is two now. They have a two and a six and a seven year old. And so they have some littles around. And then of course the big male is the, I believe one of the oldest living male silverbacks in the United States zoo and aquariums. And he's sired a lot of the population of gorillas in the U S so. His genetics are strong. Yeah. Now, see, I didn't know anything about that. I, I knew nothing about that part. But I did know about the little one. Grace? Yes. I love little Grace. Gracie. Yeah. Grace is named after a conservation section in Rwanda. It's the Gorilla Reha- Rehabilitation and Conservation uh, Education Institute. Um, thus, the word Grace. And they are known for rescuing and rehabilitating orphaned gorillas and then they'll put them in with surrogate moms and they're about that conservation and uh ending poaching and ending habitat destruction in rwanda yeah and little gracie is profiled in so cute she had some problems 
when she mm-hmm. was little, little, mm-hmm. um, she did not really progress that well with the climbing. But they so she practiced. Had, yeah, they practiced and practiced a lot. Yeah. And she got to the point where it was, she was wanting to do the practices more than she wanted to get the treat, you know? Well, that's good because you want yeah. them to... You know, I mean, food motivation with behavior is important, and oh, yeah. that's what it's about. But you want them to actually do the behavior, and not necessarily well, yeah, I mean, only for the reward. Yeah, when when she was over there nosing at the hand, and it's like, okay, yeah, I know it's there. I'm going to go up. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, I know it's there. Okay, now I'm going up. Because it's fun. Yeah. They do like to play. So. Oh yeah. So anyway, um, the other attraction that's there is the a Wildlife Express train, mm-hmm. which takes you to. Rafiki's Planet Watch and the Conservation Station. Yes. Okay. Now, that, I fell in love with that I, for a very different reason than you fell in love with it. Okay. Well, you know, um, I mean, I fell in love with it because of goats. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and the little pig. Yeah. The affection station is, is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it, it's the petting zoo. Okay. It's essentially and a petting zoo. One of the zoo. piggies in there is the uh, model. For Pua, that's for right. Moana. That's right. And the... she's still there, and she's actually deaf. Yep. And she has a goat friend who helps her hear. Mm-hmm. And they're pals, and you see them eating together and sleeping together all the time. It's fantastic. Yep. Yeah, and that's something else that um, you end up noticing if you pay attention is that animals do share a lot of the community sense. I well, guess is that humans as well do. And it's it's something that's shared shared across. I mean Well you're not that it proves that no living thing is truly solitary. Well, yeah, exactly. That community is important. Right. Right. And you know, with the little pig and the goat, they they know well, okay, the goat knows that the pig can't, can't hear. hear. And Charlotte knows that the goat's helping out. Right. So it's that all of a sudden that bond and that trust yeah. was formed. Yeah. Um, there are some, I, I mean, even in videos with, I mean, with cats, I mean, that's, cats are somewhat social. They are. But, you know, watching one of the, you know, f- feral prides with um, two females, one's totally blind, and there's another cat that helps her out, helps her get mm-hmm. around, and it's, they intertwine tails. Mm-hmm. and walk around and that's a, yeah that constant touch but yeah and so that's beautiful i love the conservation station in rafiki watch oh yeah and that's also a space where you can go in and see a lot of their invertebrates their amphibians on um, their a lot of their small reptiles and then the vet office is actually up there and they yes. have it open to where you can see procedures happen so exactly. that's kind of cool that you can get some exposure to what zoo and aquarium veterinary care is all about how they do it in Disney, which is really standard across the board. So it's, it's a neat space up there. So that's why I like it, but I know why you like it. Oh yeah. And okay. And yeah, here we go. Here we go. The reason I like it is because they have the drawing classes up there at the Rafiki planet watch or the conservation station. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. They have another conference conservation Conservation station. station. Yeah. Yeah. Um, basically you go in and learn to draw a Disney animal. And Kat and I did it for the first time in 2021. It was our first time doing it. And honestly, I am surprised that I had not done it before. I didn't know it was there. Well, yeah. I mean, nobody paid attention really. And, but I'm surprised that I had not done it before purely on the fact of I like to draw. And I think you guys have seen from my channel and from the thumbnails that I do, I like to draw. You know, I, I'm, I'm a frustrated artist as well. Okay. Yeah. Frustrated actor, frustrated artist, frustrated, um, radio personality. Performer. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. Um, but Alice, or Alice got us into, to go in to do the drawing Academy thing. And Kat and I drew Scar mm-hmm. from Lion King. It was, it was a lot of fun, but it goes awfully fast. It goes so, so fast. They do. They're really efficient. So it's about yeah. a fifth, about 20, 30, 20-ish minutes. Yeah, about 20 to 25 minutes. Yeah. yeah. So from start yeah. to finish, getting in, sat down, instructions, all that is about 20 minutes. Exactly. And then by the time you're done and you have a really cool drawing. So. Exactly. 
So anyway, there's that. That's why that area is important to me. So, and the cool part of this is to get there on the train, you actually see behind the scenes areas. So exactly. what we were alluding, alluding to earlier is that you get to see the um, sleeping areas or the behind the scenes spaces for the animals where they actually get a chance to go off exhibit, where they have choice. A lot of times, a lot of folks don't understand that those spaces are always open and available to the animals. So they, if they are done being on exhibit, they have that choice to go back there um, and get some food, rest, cooled off. They are temperature controlled. So if it's hot, a lot of times they're going to go to their exhibit areas and their behind the scenes areas because it's cool in there. There's exactly. air conditioning. Um, a lot of animals don't like it because there's air conditioning. They like it where <laughs> it's hot because that's what they're designed for. Exactly. So it they have access to those spaces all the time. So sometimes you'll get to see some animals that aren't on exhibit. You'll get to see some animals that are not exhibit ready. So it's a right. neat space. That's what's cool about the train ride. Well, and the reason that... Um, well, Chris and I loved it because it was, we had been watching that series of mm, and you got behind the scenes. Yeah. And it was like, I know that building and I know that building. <laughs> I know who lives in and there. I know that. Uh, oh, look, look, look. One of the rhinos. One yeah. of the rhinos. You know. <laughs> yeah. So, cool. yeah, it, we got stupid. We got stupid with that. But and anyway. it's a neat little train ride. It's about five-ish minutes. So, yeah. again, another excuse to get off your feet and have a slow and ride. it's also nice because... If it rains, well, I can't say, no, I can't say when if. it rains, when it rains, <laughs> when it rains, that train is actually a savior. Believe it, it or not, covered. even though it's open on one side, it, it's still, you're not going to get soaked. No, you're no. not going to get soaked. And we were riding that train in a downpour. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and again, you're in central Florida. It's not a question of if it rains, it's a question of when. when. Yeah. So oh. anyway. So in Africa, I guess, you know, I could spend a lot of time in Africa. I've spent, yeah, I've spent pri primarily the most mm -hmm. amount of time over yeah. in the Africa area. My favorite place to eat is there. So when we do this park, not only do we hit Africa first, but if I can get in there for either breakfast or lunch, I like to eat at Tusker House because it is yummy, but it's also a character meal. So Sweet. there you go. There you go. There you go. So it's kind of the way in there all in their safari gear. And it's like my my jam and my aesthetic. Oh so yeah. It's right exactly. next to uh, festival of the lion King. Mm -hmm. So a lot of time is spent there. I also have a quick service space there right on the other side of gorilla falls entrance. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but you can get some really yummy uh, Mediterranean type flair with um, Northern Africa. Northern, yeah. So the really yummy like falafels and hummus and really good cucumber, tomato, onion salad, which is, <laughs> so good when you're hot when it's hot and that cool it's crisp refreshing food. yeah it's yeah. so good in there cold wet food and guess what else you could get there a tea. an iced tea she can get tea <laughs> she can get tea i can get a very large she, you know, you, beverage that i like to can, drink there so yep but she it can closes get tea. it closes at early so you have to yeah. be strategic right across from there though you can get some yummy there's the ice cream shop Right. candy shop yep so you can get some of that refreshment too so and as far as the retail spaces go there's the guy that does the hand carved walking sticks mm -hmm. That's hand cool. carved and hand painted mm -hmm. i have one it has a gorilla on the top of it i love it yeah. i absolutely love it um it, it is a bit long to be walking around with at, as yeah. normal instead of my cane that i normally didn't bring in today That's okay you're flying yeah. solo yeah. it's your house yeah oh it was a long day yesterday, <laughs> so I'm sore. Anyway, um, I like the retail area there because... I do yeah. too. I enjoy yeah. it. I've gotten some really good things. Now, speaking of retail, I'm totally remiss in my uh, Animal Kingdom merch. Oh, so we all are. So, and every time I go, I'm like, I'm going to get a really cool shirt because I need a really cool... So, I got, got... The one I'm wearing is a 20th anniversary shirt, and I got it at the outlet. Right. Like, I don't have a lot of clothing, right. even from right. there so and every time i go there and i'm like i don't see anything that i truly love because it's got a lot of animal prints on it not animals but an animal print on it i choose to not wear animal print whether it's real animals or not i choose not to have animal print on my body um it's my choice that's what i choose so there it is so because you're not a leopard I'm not going to wear, not I, a don't, tiger. I don't, and I really You're don't not a zebra. think it's a cute aesthetic. I like, no, it's not. I'm not, 
I'm not that person. Right. So I don't like to put like, and there's a lot of that in animal kingdom, especially in women's clothing. Yes. It's a lot of animal print. So I have to be, I'm pretty picky when it comes to what I'm going to wear from animal kingdom. Sure. So. Sure. And I'm, I am picky as well because there's a lot there that just doesn't sing to me. And the only thing that really sung, sings to me was the goofy safari vest that I was just wearing. Um, the, I had the first time there, I got one of the, uh, one of the bucket hats. Mm -hmm. Um, the reason is, is cause I like it. The one that I just had on actually came from Disneyland, but it was very reminiscent of the first one I got at animal mm -hmm. kingdom 25 years ago. But anyway, um, and of course, yeah, hey, hey, yeah, there you go. You know, boat snack. <laughs> I'm wearing boat snack because he is misunderstood and there's not enough love given to hey, hey. So he's Mensa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You know. <laughs> All right. So back to we're done in Africa. So we have two choices now right. to leave Africa and go elsewhere. You can go to Pandora. Or you can move over across behind Discovery Island to Asia. Right. I choose Asia. So do I. I am not, and this is going to be controversial, fight me on it, don't care. My personal preference is I don't really enjoy Pandora. It's beautiful. It's beautiful at night. I don't enjoy it, and I could actually skip it and not ride either of the two rides ever. Um, I'm not a fan of the movies. Flight of Passage is an amazing attraction. The technology of it is very, very cool. There's enough uh, vloggers and YouTubers out there if you want to watch a POV of it. Um, I did enjoy it when I first wrote it. I thought it was great. I don't necessarily have to go to that section of the park because I like to spend my time in the animal exhibits. No, same here to a certain point. Okay. Um, I, I'm one of those that... It, Light of Passage is a ride that you should do at least once. That's my opinion on that. Pandora, I want to see it night. I want to see it at night. Well, then, I want to see it after sundown. Then go in the winter. I have to. Because <laughs> yeah. it stays light until 9.15 at night and the park's closed. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, that's why I want to see it. But it, we'll talk about pandora a little later well, so yeah, yeah so, a little later so we're gonna head to asia that's right if you haven't quite figured that out so we're headed right. off to asia um as with every disney park when you're changing parks and changing lands it's themed so you see the theming change um so that's pretty cool and then you actually get into um southeast asia in particular uh with india thailand um china a little bit nepal. china nepal so that's that section of Asia. Uh, there's a whole, the, I don't even know the name, I, I, the animal exhibits there. It's got a, a name to it. <clears throat> the ta it's, I just go by exhibits. I don't go by the exhibit areas. So they have the beautiful um, Asian Maharaja jungle trek that is what it is yeah there you are um <laughs> you have the notes <laughs> i know i'm trying I'm trying to be the zoo person along the way though there is the bird show it's the flight and feathers bird show yes. it used to be a real bird show but then they switched it over to um what is trending now in transparency in zoos and aquariums and it's a training show so they teach you and show you how animals are trained in zoos and aquariums and what that's like so it's uh if you're into that and you like watching birds and bird training and seeing what op operant conditioning is all about and how it is in action. Great show. Another one to get you off your feet. Not as cool as other shows because you're outside, but it's a good one that you can yeah. get in there. Some yummy foods along the way. And then there's the Maharaja uh, jungle trek where you get to see Komodo dragons and tigers, tigers and the fruit bats. And yes. A big, huge aviary with some really beautiful birds. Oh yeah. Um, so that is along in there. I'll give you this. Gorilla Falls, you have a better chance of seeing animals because there's more animals and they're more forward facing in their exhibit areas. The Maharaja one, they're a little more uh, back facing. 
and there's not as many exhibits. There's and the animals are a bit more seclusive. Yeah. Um. That that was something that I did notice, um, especially with tigers. Tigers are going to be out when they want to. They be want out. to be out. They're a big cat. You know, what do you expect? Exactly. <laughs> Same with lions. They're going to be out when they want well, to be out. Well, I'm sorry, but the big male will be out pride on rock. his pride rock. And yeah. either he's sleeping or he's declaring himself. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, and that's, you know, it is just the nature of the animals. But I think that there's fewer exhibits along the Maharaja. And there's also, they are more back facing where the animals are. Whereas the Gorilla Falls is a little more front facing. Right. A little so, bit different. The other attractions that they have there are the Kali River Rapids, which is at one time it was um, a little bit more exciting than it is now. Um, it also had the story of um, the essentially habitat destruction. Mm. Um, a little more conservation the, forward. Yeah, deforestation and, mm -hmm. and all that and how horrible it was. So Sumatran rainforests are the second largest rainforest in the world, right behind Asian rain or uh, the, the um, Amazon rainforests. And a lot of the clear cutting and monoculture that is happening in those rainforest areas around the world are uh, impacting animals in a lot of ways. So right. you have to be really, um, I have my tea front facing because um, this brand, not sponsored, uh, is has a little spot here. It's the Rainforest Alliance. They are actually part of rainforest conservation and they are a corporate company that are again that are helping with the conservation of rainforest so even though they're a tea company and you think they were monoculturing they're actually working towards moving away from monoculture and helping keep diversity in the rainforests there Rain, we go their rainforest is responsible for half the world's oxygen supply right and the other half comes from plankton so you got your two bigs that are in trouble and i like breathing oxygen sure so and as far as plankton goes me i silly. mean you know, I, I'm I'm appreciative that they help us breathe. <laughs> you know, as they search for the formula to the Krabby Patty. But anyway, yeah, yes, I had to do it. Sue me. Anyway, the other ex the other attraction is my favorite. <laughs> it's my favorite too. <laughs> it's my favorite in the whole park. It's like my second favorite roller coaster. Used to be my first favorite roller coaster. But we all know what my new favorite. Roller yeah, coaster and is. it's gonna go right here. The most amazing ride, and we got Tears for Fears, which is from Real Genius, which is my favorite movie in the whole wide world. Okay, but Everest is my favorite thing in this park, and oh, yeah. I will, I will buy a Genie Plus <laughs> Lane for it because because exactly I love it. It's that, much. it's that much fun, and always we look for the freaking Yeti. Yeti. So that's a little bit of a family inside joke. Well, relatively, it, did, it didn't start with our family, though. It started no. with the girls behind us. I know. You know because, and then <laughs> we're going to go backwards. Shut up. That was that you. That was me. <laughs> that was you. That was all me. And then the freaking Yeti. That all that happened was, on the same ride. It did. So here we are. And yeah, and now it's Disco Yeti because he's just in strobe lights. <laughs> he doesn't move much. And yeah. But the... The projection one is really good. Oh, the projection one's always been there. It's mm -hmm. been fantastic. So anyway, no, I, I love it. I love Everest. It's so good. Yeah. I was on Everest when the Yeti moved 25 years ago. I know it because I saw it. Anyway, it was it's good. A great one. It's a good one. And it's, it's not like, it's not like ah. the Yeti <laughs> in the Matterhorn. Matterhorn. <laughs> <laughs> it's. Yeah, they've kind of upgraded. <coughs> they've been to upgrade. They've oh made my! An upgrade. That's so. another story for another day. <laughs> the, so. the chiropractic adjust, adjustment, and then <laughs> and both of us coming off that ride, <laughs> crying because we were laughing so hard. It was great, and I was like, I hurt, but it was so funny. <laughs> it's like, hey, Alice, Alice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I told you it's gonna be one of those nights, guys. <laughs> I told you. That was one of those moments where Chris had saw us in action where we didn't have to like say any words and we just right. did it at the same time. And she's like, whoa. I mean, that was like. Yeah. She's like, what's the, going that on? That sibling moment of yeah. sharing <laughs> thoughts. Know. No. Yeah. Because we were walking down Main Street and we just look at each other like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it came out of nowhere. She's like, that's so weird. And it's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. And of course, mom's behind her going, oh, oh. You spend a lot of time in the back seat of a car with your sibling. You learn yeah. the language. Exactly. That is your very own. Exactly. And so we have that. And it's so. So, okay. So between Asia and the next region. Land. Yeah. Land region. And land. I will tell you this. I have not seen the new version. So I don't know what this is all about. I don't know what the new Nemo is. Oh, you've not seen not Finding seen, Nemo and the I've and seen the big I saw blue the and, pre-pandemic and version of it. I've oh. not seen the post-pandemic version of it. Do you remember seeing the Tarzan show there? No. Oh my. I did not see the Tarzan show. I didn't go until it was Nemo. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um we Chris and I saw the Tarzan show there. Um that of course was 25 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um it was okay. It was okay. Um, Which is why they put the Nemo show. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not going to lie. I like the Tarzan stuff from Disney because I'm a Phil Collins fan mm-hmm. and I like it. And it's also the fact that Phil Collins is a percussionist and a vocalist. Yeah. So. There you are. Hero. Boom. That's right. Um, anyway, Finding Nemo and the Big, the Big Blue and Beyond is a show. That you can see. that Basically a retelling of Finding Nemo, not Finding Dory, Finding Nemo. Right. And it's something you can do if if you really want to. It's not bad. It's not Beauty and the Beast Hollywood for good, but it's not bad. I was going to say Beauty and the Beast in Hollywood is fantastic. I know. I was going to say, it's, it's not like that. It's like, that's... Broad, no. Broadway caliber, like this right. is kind of like you know, it's and a, it's it's it's, it's the puppets, uh-huh. it's the puppets that they use for Finding Nemo, um, which I find to be ingenious and lovely. Oh yeah, okay, I mean, I've, it's creative I've, and it's cl- it's clever. If you have I, littles, it's perfect. I've always loved that, and the reason is is because of the Lion King Broadway show. I mm. I'm into that. So okay. hot take, okay. you have to choose between Finding Nemo and Festival of Lion King. Go to Festival of Lion King. Spend your time in yes. line for that. Yes. Not Finding Nemo. Yeah, exactly. I mean. That's what we would do if we were choosing how we were going to do our park day. That's what we would do. Exactly. I'm just going to say, don't waste your time. Yeah. Do not waste your time. Um, If you see the theater for it, if they're still showing the Finding Nemo show, keep walking. Or the other, here's the other thing. If you're stupid hot and you have to get out of the heat and need in some air conditioning, Go see Finding Nemo. Well, yeah. If you, if you need to sit down. Well, there's not air conditioning. It's an open air theater. No, it's a, it's an. It's an open I air theater. I thought it was theater. inside. No, it's an okay. open air theater. We can fight about that. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, needless to say, our park day, we would actually skip it and yep. keep moving on. Yeah. We would, yeah. Cut print, moving on. Off we go. And we are ending up into Dino Land, USA. I know this part of the fossil record you just don't care about. No, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> dinosaurs and little kids they think that that is you know a given um it served its purpose yeah but it's actually being transitioned into something else yeah uh into several something several else something else i i i don't know enough exactly about what's happening right now to tell anybody anything about what's going on right now with it so i feel i feel rumor as though I, I can't really say much well there's some rumors yeah. there's a just because of the success in um, Tokyo, is it Tokyo where Zootopia is? Yes. Yeah. So there's a, a whole theming and land of Zootopia, which actually has turned into one of my f- top D- Disney movies. I okay. enjoy Zootopia. I like okay. it. Okay. So... That's a rumor mill that that's coming in there. Right. Um, d- though, the one of the fun ones that we actually kind of hit because it's a fa- it's kind of nostalgic for our family that we will hit and ride is Dinosaur. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the last time that we wrote it, when we all wrote it together, together, um, was with Meg. No, it was my birthday. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, we were there on your birthday, but yeah. I'm talking about when Chris was pregnant. Oh, yeah. And Chris did not have a good time. No, no, no. It does Chris get a little a turkey time. jerky in there, so you have to be aware of that. There is a very intense T-Rex moment. Carnosaur, yes. So whatever. 
<laughs> See, the, oh, okay. So we're supposed to be accurate about Zootopia, but... The living things. <laughs> you don't know what they look like. All you have is fossil records. That's right. You have no idea what they sounded like, and you're making them growl like that. You sure. don't know what they sounded like. You can't see vocal cords. Who knows? Did they have them? We don't know. We don't know. It's all supposition. But we certainly didn't... We certainly know that sloths don't work at the DMV. They don't have those kind of teeth. Okay. So, That's moving okay. on. So... <laughs> it's a fun one, but there are some intense moments. So again, you just have to be, you know, know know your party, know your who's right. riding. But essentially, dinosaur is a trip back in time to go and rescue an allosaur. I think iguanosaur, iguanodon, iguanodon. Yeah, an iguanodon. I'm sorry, allosaurs are carnivorous. Iguanodons are are not um, vegetarians. Um. But anyway, you, you're going back in time to rescue this dinosaur, bring back the specimen. Um, you're not really supposed to, but you're going to. And it's essentially the same format, same pattern, and same ride vehicle as Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Forbidden Eye. Which is another rumor of what's going to be brought there. I can't. I, I don't think I'm, so. I don't yeah, think so. I don't know. And I have a hard, I kind of hope that they don't because I like having that be a Disneyland thing. And things like Everest being an Everest uh, animal kingdom thing. Like, yes. I like yes. the separateness, the same, but yet the separateness to have unique right. places. But that's but my there, opinion. There is so much rich storytelling that Disney has that they can do mm -hmm. with, with that area that doesn't necessarily have to revolve around the Cretaceous period. Right. You know, I mean, it's just the dinosaurs are fun for people like me. And kids, okay? And That's I think, about where it begins and ends. I think, it, say, even the kids are sophisticated. Not even, I don't think sophisticated is the right word, but just interests have moved on where it's it's yeah. very niche now. Yeah. It's not so general. So exactly. I think re-theming and reimagining that space is not a bad thing. It gives some flavor and some life to a space that hasn't had a whole lot of change other than Pandora. And you Exactly. Know, it's it, It's okay. Exactly. Change I'm, is okay. I'm okay with that too. Yeah. I am okay with that too. All right. So we've moved our way back to Discovery Island. Kind of, yes. On our way though, we need to look for Kevin. Oh, yes. Oh, so we're not going to talk about Triceratops Spin and... No, and I don't ride them. And Chester and Hester's gift shop and... No, I mean, there's yeah. shopping and things like that in there. It is de definitely Littles centric. Oh, you have a really great meet and greet with Daisy and Donald, though. That's right. And Chip and Dale. And Chip and Dale. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some great Chip character interactions there. Chip and Dale dressed up in their dinosaur costumes. And and Daisy and Donald. Da Donald's the mayor of yep. Dino Land USA. And he's That's in right. his mayor outfit. But anyway, it's a great meet and greets back there. Um, some fun things. But I think, you know, like at, if I was doing my Disney day, which is kind of what we're talking about, I wouldn't spend much time back there. I would move. Uh, I would. I probably wouldn't even go in if we were not all interested in riding dinosaur. I'd move after on. after the construction and everything that they've started to remove anyway, um, there's not much there to keep mm -mm. me there. Uh, the Cretaceous Trail is a nice little nature trail if you're into botany. Yeah. You know, if you're into plants. Go for it. Right on. Hot and humid, though. Remember, yeah. that's where all the humidity is going to be. But held. there are some pretty cool plants. I'm back sure. In there, I'm sure. You know? Yeah. I mean, the reeds alone. Yeah. And the 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 little proto bamboo thing. Oh, it's just. So, I, love I mean, it. sure, it is beautiful. That. I'm sure it's great. But oh, again, yeah. I just my Disney day. I wouldn't go back there. Well, sure. I choose sure. to spend more time in Africa. <laughs> well, yeah. So yeah, as you said, that we're moving through uh, Discovery Island again, mm -hmm. and we're moving all the way over to the west side now of Discovery Island, and moving into. Here it comes. Yes. We are now going into Pandora, the world of Avatar. Um, yeah. Uh, they have a good bathroom back there. Yeah, they do. That's... <laughs> Honestly, though, the sets I, and the theming it, it is, is nice. It it's is cool. cool. I am going to... You know? vi the visuals of it, I'm going to... I don't disagree with that. Sure. It's just, that's not my jam. I've ridden the rides in there. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. And as for me, I'll go back on Safari. I I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the Avatar franchise in the first place. I'm just, I just didn't get into it because mm -hmm. for me, it was sort of like um, the retelling the story of Dances with Wolves, and now it's Dances with Aliens. You know, um, I 
I understand the message behind the movies and agree. I understand and know that there are fans out there, and this is not to yuck anybody's yum. It's just not for me. Right. Okay. If I'm going to do a science fiction thing, it's going to be Star Wars. Okay. That's, that's my franchise. That's my love. That's where I'm going. But we need to touch on it. Um, there are two attractions there. Um, as far as, as far as retail and food, it's just a couple, uh, a gift shop and there's some, there is a yummy snack, snack, uh, grab and go. Yeah, it's a quick service. A quick service there. They have some pretty good yeah. fresh foods, like good vegetables, noodles, yeah. a good meat. And it's, it's like a pho yeah. kind of based, um, they have bows, so they're good yeah. and yeah. it is a good place to go inside and cool off, um, have a sit down. On that side of the yeah. park in particular. The so. entire area is themed to the theming or the, to the whole Avatar, Avatar yeah. franchise. Mm-hmm. Okay, so ex- expect that there's going to be some... Blue noodles. <laughs> no. No, there will not be blue noodles. That's a Star Wars thing. No, there are blue noodles. At really? Uh-huh. Really? Okay, yeah, I stand one corrected. Of the bowl, one of their pho bowls has uh, blue noodles in it. Okay. And um, really yummy broth. It is good. The, the It's where you're going to see a lot of human structures incorporated with the native alien yeah yeah okay or the they're not aliens we're the aliens we're the aliens yeah i will give you this the queue of flight of passage is that is fun very cool it, and that i'm not fun. even a fan of the movies but it is really well done well the, themed okay I, the thing is though the queue of the navi river journey for me is just as fun um the flight of passage I'm just going to say it. It's sort of like Soren, but on steroids. Right. Okay. You you get on, you, basically it's a simulation of riding on the back of a banshee. And you are linking up with your Na'avi ra- avatar so that you can link up organically with the banshee. Mm-hmm. And go for a ride. Um, Fly. <laughs> <laughs> to quote the pre-show. Anyway, um, it's a lot of fun. I was in tears riding the thing and then getting <laughs> off because the simulation was that much it's fun cool. for me. Yeah, it's good. You know, it was that much fun. Um, now, the Navi River Journey. It's small world. It's small world <laughs> on an alien in planet. Avatar. <laughs> yeah. It's small I, world on an alien planet. It's fun. It's good for little. There's it's slow. There's a lot, a lot of fun things to look at. Good visuals. Um, it's the setting is beautiful. It's gorgeous, it, and it's somewhat immersive, somewhat immersive. And it has the most advanced and best animatronic in any Disney park. Okay, it I know is, you love it. It the is shaman. the most. The shaman is the most advanced Disney animatronic yeah. to date. To date. There is not one that has come that has gone beyond that. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing that I can say that maybe has gone beyond the shaman is the ambulatory animatronic that they showcased last year at D23, and it mm-hmm. was when it was going to be showcased out at California Adventure. Well, and then I guess the spy. I have we have not ever seen Spider Man. At I take it back. I haven't seen that one. Spider-Man. I take it back. I take it back. The stunt robot. The stunt robot. The Spider-Man stunt robot blasts away. Because that's the shaman. That's that's the most the recent. Mo- yeah, that's the most recent. I I, I recant everything I just said. <laughs> I recant it. Anyway, it's a good animatronic. It's, it's a good, beautiful. Yeah. It has multifunction in the face, the hands, the wrists, the fingers. It's very lifelike. It's beautiful. So it's really cool. It is so beautiful. Anyway, um, that's and that about that about wraps up. That's that. So if you're just going to go in and have like a normal day, that's what you would do. But there are some extras that you can do in the park that are um, not just the exhibits or the rides. Right. Um, there, like there are pop up shows in Asia. There are pop up shows in Africa where they have um, traditional music. The drummers. The drummers. Oh There's yeah. There's the um, the gentleman in Asia who plays the sitar mm-hmm. um so it's real i mean there's some neat things where you could just have if you want to have a sit down quiet 
not quiet, but just have a sit down and listen to some live music with well, some traditional stuff. It's great. Again, this is a fantastic park to sit and absorb. And just watch. Yeah. You know, because I mean, even the local wildlife mm -hmm. that inhabits the park is worth the it. The bonus critters. Yes. Your spoonbills and your rosettes. Yes. <laughs> well, was there an... An ibises. An ibises. Stuff. that yeah. was, The ibis that joined us for lunch. Yeah. You know, that was great. <laughs> yeah. Giving us the side eye. Waiting Wrong for me to people to try and beg from, kid. Yeah. You know, I mean, giving us the side eye. Hope, <laughs> we're hoping. Come on, drop it. Drop it. I know you want to drop it. Come on, drop it. Drop it. Drop it. I want the hot dog. <laughs> Wrong kids. Yep. Wrong kids. But anyway. So um, on that end, I'm 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 sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and wrap this up because we're about an hour and a quarter in. Ooh. Yeah. So um, you did a special thing. I did. So this is one of those extra things that you can do, and they have them actually at a couple of spaces, Animal Kingdom and in Epcot. But I did the Wild Animal Trek Tour, and this is a behind the scenes tour. Ooh. <laughs> that okay. you could do um, where you actually go along the safari and you get to see the exhibit spaces where the key like in the keeper spaces so where above the exhibits um the best part was we uh had our snack at a little hut in the middle of the savanna and the snack was from Tiffin's. It's the best food I had in that park ever. It was so good. But we sat there and watched the giraffes and the zebras and the elephants on the other side and the flamingos. It was amazing. We just sat there. Um, I have a picture. Yep. Of us with the savannah in the background. It's so good. It was um, 100% worth it, especially if you're kind of a zoo aquarium geek or an animal geek and you want to see those exhibit areas. I'm in exhibit areas and behind the scenes areas all the time just because of my job. So that part wasn't what was really super cool for me. It was just neat being in a different perspective in space, the animals. Um, on the tour, you get a water bottle and a cooling towel as part of your um, adventure because they want you hydrated and cool and it's hot. As we talked about, Animal Kingdom is hot. So they provide you those things and then lots of water and you're hooked up in a one of the cool pieces is that there's this um, rickety bridge over the uh, crocodile exhibit and you actually walk across that. So you get harnessed up and you have to hook into uh, zip lines and you have to walk across that. We have some pictures of that too and probably a little video of me doing that. It was amazing. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Another one of those tours is actually um, meeting nature's giants i think is the name of it and you get to go to the rhinos the hippos and the elephants right and you get to feed the elephants which is the next one i'm going to be doing so yeah and we want to definitely want to thank tom and lynette from yes magical MVP, vacation they, Planner. yeah and they we all went on it they're in the photo with me um yep. with our friend heather and it was perfect it was one of the best ways to do that park and i loved it so yes again it's nod to Lynette and Tom Pfeiffer, Magical Vacation Planner. I will try and put a link in the yeah. uh, in the uh, description they can find of this video. All of those extras for you. Right. Um, they're essentially a travel concierge service. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't pay them a dime. You don't pay them directly. Mm -mm. Okay. All you do is, of course, pay book, your trip. Your, yeah, book <laughs> a trip, pay your fee on that. But that's where it begins and ends. They do the planning. Yeah. They do all the fun stuff yeah. or the not so the, fun the stuff. The stuff that takes the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So So definitely um nod to Tom to Lynette and Tom. Thank you again. They were the ones that actually got us on that on the trip up there in two, in 2021. Yeah. So yeah, that was fun. Really cool. Um let's see what else have we got? So eating, there's definitely places to eat there. There's places to get drinks, different kinds of fare. You could shop your way out. I don't recommend it. But, well, well, th no, this park, we have. We have shopped okay. our way out. Yeah, it was okay. But it's not as um, intense because it does close the earliest. So people move in and out of there really quickly. It, like I said, it's my favorite. I could spend, I spend open to close there right. often. Right. I love it. And um, it's definitely a have to for me there. A lot of people pass on it and I am never a pass on Animal Kingdom. I don't think I'll ever be a pass on Animal Kingdom. No. I don't think so. I mean, it's that's that's something i love doing i mean i've i've loved animal kingdom since the get-go mm -hmm. so 
Um, so the, I, I guess. So that's we've done Florida. Yeah, we have done Florida. There's how it's how we do Florida, and that's how we do Walt Disney World resorts, and how we approach those trips. So we have concluded this series. We have, and we're at the point now where. What's next? I mean, do we talk about Disney Springs? Do we talk about the two water parks? We could just do a whole series and talk about the extras of Disney. It's not all about the rides. Yeah, because they've got a racetrack there. They've got a sports Especially complex in Florida, there. And then tours, all of the stuff that you won't think about doing at a Disney park that you should be doing at a Disney park. Or, yeah, or really could be. Or could be. Yeah. Either, yeah. either coast. There's a lot of behind the scenes tours. There's a lot of extras. There's a lot of histori- historical things you can do and learning about Walt. So. Yeah, our, I our series ideas are endless, Jack. Well, yeah, that's true. So, um, and we can talk, obviously. <laughs> what are we at? Hour and a half. Uh, hour and twenty. There you go. Hour and twenty. I get paid to talk for a living, folks. So, so again, join us in two weeks. <laughs> we have no idea what we're going to be doing. Um, I will probably not announce it, and it will just happen, and then I'll create the thumbnail and everything, and boom, off we go. But again, thank you for coming yeah, with us on this thank journey. You. Um, we've had so much fun. I've had a great time. <laughs> it's fun uh, reminiscing too. I've learned so much. I mean, I've got now a multi-camera setup mm-hmm. now where, you know, here we are. I'm, I'm, I'm having too much fun playing with things, you know? So, um, I can't stop now. This is, I just have to get, you know, got improve. More to do. I got to improve everything. Well, we got more to say too. We, yep. don't have to have, we can move from Disney to other trips. So. Thanks, everyone.